Hi everyone. I am just going to take a second to um, wind a new bobbin because knowing me it'll run out. And I've been using this one so I don't want to take the risk and play bobbin chicken today. Hi Deb, hi Cindy, hi Nova. So today we are doing the retreat bag. Um, if you missed it in April, end of April, I had already done one actually in the Emmeline Bags group. And usually with my lives, I've been uploading them to um, YouTube for like future viewing or replays or anything. And it was really bad quality, so I couldn't upload it. It was funny because they were asking me if I was using uh, pinking shears to trim my um, sides and I was like I'm not using pinking shears why is it showing like this but then I went back and watched the replay and I was like okay I totally get why they asked me that now because it was so blurry that it looked like it was pinking shears so I decided to redo it so that I could um, so that I could repost a new one great And then I figured I might as well do this one live, too. Just in case anybody wanted to watch and miss the other one. So, today, uh, last time I made it with vinyl and um, waterproof canvas. The waterproof canvas I used last time was from Walmart. It was the Pro Tough. And, um, it's not bad. It's super cheap and it comes in lots of colors. But it is definitely not the same quality as the Otter Tex. So, I will show you in a sec. So the um, last bag that I made was this one, and so it's this purple holographic stuff. Hi, Ma Mammy. Thanks, Beth. Hi, Shirley, Doris, Pam, and it's got this fun little rainbow sparkle zipper and on the inside hi Suzanne is a waterproof canvas so this is the pro tough and you know what, now that it's had a chance to kind of sit for a little bit it doesn't look as bad but it's thin and more plasticky than the um, otter tax is so it's really it holds its wrinkles a little better. Um, I have a scrap right here. Let me grab these scissors. Hi, Micheline. Hi, Barbara. So this is the Pro Tough stuff. And you can see already that it's got like creasing in it. And if you if you ball it up, you see how the creases kind of have these, you know, like the white marks that you can definitely tell that it's been creased. So even if you iron it, those white marks aren't going to go away. Whereas with outer text, do you have a scrap piece somewhere? 
thought I did. So the Otter text is this one. And this one's a lot more fabricry. Fa fabricy? Feels a lot more like fabric. So you can crumple this one up. And while you still see wrinkles on it, on the back side, which is the waterproof side, you don't get those same white crinkles. So this, I would feel fine um, ironing on the right side, so the side that has more texture, as opposed to the wrong side that's more plasticky. So last time I used Pro Tough, um, the benefit of the Pro Tough product is it's like $3 a yard. Whereas Outer Text, I get mine from Fabric um, Wholesale Direct.com. And this is, I want to say, $7.50 a yard um, if you just buy the minimum amount. Hi, Amy. Hi, Vicki. So that was the problem with using that one. So this one I decided to make with waxed canvas. I'm excited because it's my first time working with waxed canvas. So this is the waxed canvas I will be using. It is a um, kind of dark olive gray, grayish kind of color. And I am using, like I said, the Otter Text waterproof canvas in this forest green color. Uh, my zipper is a zipper by the yard and it is a brown with an antique brass teeth coil and I have a little zipper pull for it I've got my fusible fleece cut out uh, this is I want to say this is the Pellon fusible fleece not the Thermalam and of course, my frames from Emmeline. And for um, the zipper ends, I have a couple of squares of the waterproof canvas cut out. So in the pattern, I want to say that she suggested two by two, two by three rectangles. So that's what I have here. And then I want to try to do, and I, I have never done it before, so we're going to get through it, go through it together, um, a mesh pocket on the inside. So this is a piece of the By Annie lightweight mesh. It stretches a little bit this way, but it doesn't stretch at all this way. So it's got a little bit of like mechanical give side to side but it's pretty sturdy or stable this way. So you want to make sure that the um, stable side is up and down because you don't want your pocket to droop downwards. Hi Renee, hi Rob. So the, um, oh, the other thing I have for that is just a strip of fold over elastic. So this is just um, fold over elastic that I got from Hobby Lobby. You can get it lots of places. This is just some that I had purchased and never used yet. So it comes in a roll like this. It's over in um, the, like where they have their uh, ribbon and stuff in the sewing section though, not over like by the floral stuff. And so I cut this and this so this is going to be on one side of one of my pockets so I'm still going to have the Otter Text backing the pocket and then this is going to be the front of the pocket so I cut out this like an inch or two wider um, because I know I want the elastic to kind of gather some of it together on the top to create kind of like a, a well, I guess a gathered look so that it holds your product in and doesn't fall out. 
Um, and from experience, I am going to take my frames. And the first thing I'm doing is I am gluing these rubber things on. Um, it was a huge pain last time because I couldn't get it to go in the, um, in the channel that was supposed to be in because of, I don't know if it was the ProTuff that I was using or what, but it just was not working out. So I just have, um, some, eh, probably shouldn't use this one. I have some super glue. I had some super glue. Oh, it's in here. So this is just a super glue gel, which I like the gel better than the regular super glue that's really runny. So I'm just going to take this and put like the tiniest, tiniest drop inside. And you only want to put a little bit in there because you don't want the excess excess super glue to come out the top because that's just going to be a mess. So let's just toss that on there. Do this at the beginning so that it'll have plenty of time to dry, even though we're using super glue, so it'll dry relatively quick. Okay, so I have these um, rubber tips glued on, and I'm going to put them on the side for now. Bernadette, did it work out very well for you? I'm hoping that it works out for me, because I kept having to pull the wire back out, put the rubber stopper back on, and do it all over again. So first step I am going to do is to fuse my fusible fleece onto my pieces. So I've got the instructions right here. By the way, if you are following and you don't have the pattern yet, again, it is the retreat bag. Um, actually, technically the retreat bag 2.0 and it is by M-Line Bags. So you can find that for free at mlinebags.com along with the um, frames and essentially pretty much everything that I have. Um, except, yeah, I think she has fold over elastic from by Annie and then the zipper tape, she just might not have the exact same color, but um, she pretty much has everything. Oh no. That is a pain. So I have this, and I'm going to grab a little Teflon sheet. And because I am using thicker fabrics, I am not going to use um, woven interfacing. And I'm only using feasible fleece for um, the structure. The wrong side of okay. So we are skipping step one. So step two, on the exterior body pieces, add one layer of fusible fleece over previously fused interfacing. Be sure to use a pressing cloth, especially since I am using wax canvas. I want to make sure that I'm using that protective cloth, which is this, um, like, it's like a Teflon sheet. So I want to make sure that I'm not getting any of the canvas from this onto my iron. Um, and I want to make sure that it adheres. So yeah, Vicki, it was, it was from the first one where I had so much issue that um, I think somebody mentioned it during the live that time, actually. It might have actually been Janelle, but I think she mentioned it after I had already started 
putting them in and I was like, oh, too late for that. But I made sure to remember this time. So I am just trimming a little bit of my fusible fleece off because I had not cut it exactly to size. Um, I have a tendency to undercut things if I'm trying to cut it down to the exact size. So I like to cut things a little wider than they need to be and then um, go back and trim it down. It's a little wasteful, but it's a lot more accurate. So for wax canvas, I don't know if there's a right side or a wrong side because the wax pretty much permeates through the entirety. But I did make sure that whatever size I picked, I was consistent with it. So I had marked both of my um, sides with an X, a little very faint chalk X right there and right here so that like these two were cut this, this way and these two are the back or the opposite side. That way I don't have it going like this just in case the um, <clears throat> colors look a little different or the grain patterns look different just for consistency. So let's start with one of the pieces. Lay that out. Grab Please. Hi, Dalva. James, after today, I will figure out if that works better for me or not. Like I said, this is my first time with wax canvas, and the only thing that I know is that I do not want it on my um, iron. So I just have my Sunbeam iron. It is one of the convertible um, cord, wireless, cordless ones with a base that you can put it on and charge um, or you can keep the base with it and it'll stay that way connected so let's you know it's annoying on this one I can never tell which side is the glue side and again, this is the the thinner um, usable fleece. So the, both sides of them are rough. So it's really hard to tell which one is rougher, I guess. Um, and Julie, yes, we can definitely talk about the zipper. Are you talking about zipper by the yard um, or the kind of zipper that you buy that is already done and has the... Um, zipper pull already on it. Okay. So, I'm going to give up. <laughs> and I'm just going to spray baste it on there. So this is just a multi-purpose spray glue. It's great for crafts, supposedly. I got this from the Dollar Tree. And probably shouldn't spray that on my wool mat. Julie, does the package say what uh, what the zipper is made of? Like, does it say that it is a nylon zipper or a resin zipper? Hopefully, it's not a metal zipper.
this glue is not very sticky. All right, fabric tech it is. Okay, great. We can definitely do that. Your first step for that zipper is to make sure you have a pair of scissors that is not your fabric shears. So don't don't cut your zipper with your fabric shears. Double, I haven't decided if I'm doing straps yet. I kind of wanted to um, get to that point and see what everybody thought. And if we wanted to, we could go back and um, add the straps before we finish the bag. Okay, so... Um, step three is to fuse the interfacing onto the wrong side of the pocket pieces, but because I am not... Um, using regular quilting cotton, I'm using waterproof canvas. I don't have to use the interfacing, um, which is a big perk of using waterproof canvas. And mark the pieces. So on the wrong side of each of the four body pieces, on the top edge only, make a mark one inch from the top and the right side edges. Let's see, that glue did not... The Dollar Tree glue did not stay. It felt like it was just slightly sticky water. Sugar water probably would have been stickier than that. I like the ease um, of spray glue, but I don't like spraying it because it tends to get everywhere so even if I you know make sure that it's out of the way of my cutting mat or something like somehow it still ends up on my cutting mat I don't know how okay Julie awesome so I'm going to use a just a regular fine tip sharpie and I'm actually going to angle the camera down a little bit. Oops. Let me know if that angle doesn't work for y'all. And grab my ruler. This is the Omni Grip ruler by Omni Grid. So it's got, you know, the usual gridded lines and it's also non slip. So on the back side of the bag, or the wrong side, I am just making those tiny, tiny one inch marks at the top. So right there, oops, there. So just go ahead and do that on the other one as well. And you are going to do that on your um, lining pieces too. So total you should have four pieces that are the same size and one inch marks on the top edge of all of them. Then we're going to take the same four pieces and cut out a two inch square on the bottom. Um, if you are doing the uh, large size retreat bag, you can go ahead and cut out a three inch square from the bottom. So now, so if this is the top where we just marked um, those one inch hatch marks, now we're going to cut them out of here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my ruler. I'm going to stack up both of my lining pieces and do them at the same time. 
and just draw a two by two square. on each corner and then go back with my scissors and go ahead and cut that out. is going to look like this. Dad, that is a great idea. That too, Floor. I have a ton of boxes that I could do that with. So now I am doing the same thing with my um, exterior pieces. So Julie, basically, and I can go over it in more detail if um, you want. So you're going to take your zipper and then measure down, measure the coil only. Only the coil, not the actual like tape on the sides. And... Um, Measure it to what's the uh, 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 uh. actually you need a 16 inch. So, are you saying that your zipper is bigger than 16 inches? Because that's the only um, way you would need to cut it down. this one right yes I did <clears throat> so again I have both of my exterior pieces stacked up and I'm cutting both of them at the same time you don't have to but if you've ever watched any of my lives either from Swoon or um, the recent one in Mrs. H. Uh, we have established that I am a lazy sewer. So anywhere I can afford to cut corners, <laughs> look, literally I'm cutting corners, um, I will do so. And sometimes it doesn't work and it ends up biting me in the rear, but that's okay. Because it's a learning experience. Okay, so now I have these cut out on the bottom. And optional pull back and trim off the, fu the fusible fleece from the seam allowance around the cutouts to reduce bulk in the seams. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So I'm just cutting like a little L shaped piece from around the corners that we just cut. If you can. Some of mine is uh, glued on there pretty well. It's nice to know that Fabri-Tac works. Okay, um, you are, zipper, hang on, let me look at the zipper part real quick. Okay, 
Oh, I see. Okay, yes, because she wants you to be able to separate the zippers at the top and the bottom. So, um... Cut a length of 16. So can you measure your zipper? Is it from, uh, let me see if I have a, I do. Okay, so this is a pre-made zipper. So when they are saying the um, length of the zipper, they are talking from the beginning of the coil to the end of the coil. So just where the teeth are, not like from here to here. So you need to make sure that from the top to the bottom is 16 inches. So if it's longer, then you can cut it above the metal stop, which is what Janelle is saying to remove. But you will, like Suzanne said, you will want to stitch back and forth wherever you end up cutting to make sure that your zipper stays together. And then we're going to go ahead and start construction of the pockets. So your two pocket pieces should be two squares. And fold it right sides together. And pin along the raw edges. I usually don't pin, I clip. In fact, I have like three different kinds of clips just in case one of them don't work out. Uh, just because I tend to poke myself with pins. Alright, so with a quarter inch seam allowance, we're going to sew three sides together, leaving a three inch gap for turning. So to re visually remind me, I just take my ruler, and at the bottom I will make a couple of patch marks at the in the middle to make three inch gap to remind myself, hey, stop sewing here. Doesn't have to be perfectly centered or any of that. Doesn't matter. You're I took it out to do the bobbin. Also, if you are wondering what machine I am sewing on, I am sewing on the Juki TL2000 um, QI. It's a mouthful. But it is a uh, considered a semi-industrial, which is not a real technical term, but it's a good description of what it is and what it can do. Um, it can sew, I want to say, 1,200 stitches per minute. It is capable of doing that. I've never actually had it go that fast because it scares me. My finger will end up underneath there. 
um, and it is a straight stitch only machine. Stitch length at a three and back stitch. So when you turn the corners, don't forget to leave your needle in your material. Lift your presser foot and pivot. And then when you get to the hatch mark before where you're supposed to leave it um, open, back stitch. So I do that for extra reinforcement so that the stitches don't pop as easily um, when I'm turning the pocket later. And then I cut my thread and then I'm starting again at the next hatch mark. Back stitch a couple and keep going. Pivot. And... Hi, Anne. Okay, so before turning right side out, press the seam allowance on the three inch opening open. So if you're using quilting cotton or um, something where you can use an iron, you can go ahead and use your iron, but because I'm using waterproof canvas, um, I try not to iron it unless I absolutely have to. I am just going to finger press it to start. A seam roller tool that I'm just going to go back and roll to get as sharp of a crease as I can. So seam rolling tools um, you can find in the sewing notion section of uh, most shops. I know Singer has one. Um, I have that one somewhere, but I actually prefer using this one. Um, it's a, a random generic one that came with my uh, stair, like adhesive stair grips. So you're supposed to roll so that there's no um, bubbles and it, it adheres firmly. But I like using it for sewing. And then we're going to clip the four corners without clipping into your stitches. And this just reduces your seam allowance. And then... So after you clip... You can go ahead and turn. Oh, sorry, Wendy, I will adjust it when I sew on the machine and see if that helps. I'm good, Michelle. How are you? Deb, I do. I actually carry all four of uh, the frames from Emmeline. So the three rectangular ones, and there is um, a half circular one that is for the Castell day bag, um, which is one of her patterns, and it's definitely on my list of ones I want to make. Um, maybe Michelle, I'm not familiar with what those rollers look like, 
but as long as it can roll back and forth, you are totally fine using it. So I'm just using my bone folder to poke out the corners. Oops. And I poked a little too much. Okay, now I'm going to tuck in that three inch gap that we had left earlier. Go ahead and roll that shut. And then we are going to stitch across the long edge that is folded. So not the one where we left the gap, but the folded one. So let me, hopefully this is better. So now you're top stitching, I'm changing mine to a four. And she said you can do one or two rows. I prefer one. And I don't back stitch when I top stitch. And I top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I'm actually using brown thread, so it'll match the exterior. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to tuck this in a little better. Anyways, so it'll look like this. So now we're to the point where we're going to figure out how we're going to do this other pocket. So... <laughs> Okay, so the first thing that I want to decide is, do I want to leave it two layers and then put a layer of mesh over it, or should I cut it in half and then only put a layer over one layer, or a layer of the mesh over one layer of the pocket? Because then it will be like, like this, plus your actual lining back here, plus your exterior. Excuse me, grabbing some water. So I think to reduce some bulk and thickness, I'm going to cut it in half. So now my 8x8 square is going to be 4x8. And let's figure out how to do this together. So like I said, it has mechanical stretch. You want it this way. And this is my fold over elastic. So I'm going to go ahead and fold it over and clip it on one end. And then just keep, keep it lined up and fold over. It is not the easiest thing to do. So actually what I forgot to do is to slightly stretch it. Okay. 
because I want it to um, hold together the top of the mesh so that everything stays contained, if that makes any sense. Hopefully it'll make sense once I can show you. You see how it kind of like gathers and puckers at the top. And this is going to slightly bother me because my mesh is gray, my fold over elastic is gray, but my thread is brown. But that's okay. It's got to be dark in the bag. Can't see it that well. Stitch length, changing that down to three. Start a couple, back stitch, and then I'm going to take out the clips now that I have the beginning secured inside of the machine. And then I'm going to slightly stretch and hold a little bit, and then sew a little bit, and then grab another section, pull that elastic so that it's stretched out so you want to stretch the elastic not the mesh So you can tell it's not like exactly flat, it's a little concave I guess you could say. So now I'm going to take that half and hmm. I don't know if this can be turned out or not. I guess we will figure out. So I'm going to try sewing it wrong right sides together and then flipping it out so that the seams are enclosed. But I don't know if the stitches will hold in this mesh enough to be able to turn it. So let's find out. Oh yeah, Bernadette, this foot stays on my machine all the time unless I switch it to a um, compensating foot or a zipper foot. my piece of mesh is huge because I didn't cut it down. Wanted to see exactly where I needed to trim since I've never actually worked with it before, um, before I cut it because I didn't want to cut it and it wouldn't hold in this, you know, seam allowance width. Now, let's 
trim that mesh. So it's not bad after you turn it. Obviously, I need to press everything out, but I did miss um, a couple spots right here where the um, stitches didn't grab the mesh. So I'm just going to turn it back and decrease my stitch length even more so that there are more stitches and it will help um, hold the mesh in place. So I'm just doing another row of stitching alongside the bottom. to be right side out. I'm just going to roll the seams a little bit so that it's a little flatter. So we have our mesh pocket. So now we have both of our pockets. So this one's a slip pocket, this one's going to be a mesh pocket, and those are going to go on the side, sides of the bag. And take one of your lining body pieces, fold it in half along the long side to find the center and then finger press to make a crease. So so I made my crease and center your pocket on the folded crease with the bottom edge three inches up from the bottom. Clips back in the container. So make sure that you have your right side of your pocket up. And I'm just going to find the center of my pocket too. So that I can make sure that lines up with the center crease from the lining. And so your bottom edge should be three inches up from the bottom. machine and then I'm going to put the foot down to hold it in place grab my ruler one more time just to make sure that I have everything lined up because I didn't pin and then
thank you. The little roller is very, very um, helpful. All right, so this is what my pocket looks like. The mesh pocket, at least. So I am going to do one more row of stitches right at the top of my canvas side of the mesh liner and that's just to hold it in place or I mean theoretically I could leave it and then you've kind of got three pockets can you even see it no it's dark sorry so you've got a pocket between the mesh and the first pocket lining and then you've got the pocket lining and the lining eh, I'm gonna leave it And then for the other one that we're doing, the slip pocket, you want to make it so that your, um, your edge with the top stitching that you already did is going to be at the top and your turning gap is going to be at the bottom and again we're going to do three inches from the bottom that's where the bottom of your pocket should lay Make sure that your gap is held in or tucked in before you sew that bottom. Just to add a little bit of interest, I am going to pop some tiny rivets on the corner of the pocket. So I have my hole punch. I got this from Amazon. I have my wonderful organized rivet case. So for little like decorative pieces like this, I like to use tiny 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 rivets like this is super small like I'm pretty sure that's four milliliter four sorry millimeters um and then like this is the medium size that I have and this is a large size so for comparison it is really small I think they are super cute and it's really good for decorative purposes because you don't have to worry about them um, being too big or not thick enough or your material not being thick enough to keep it in place because it's not actually keeping anything in place. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let me roll this up. And I'm just going to punch a hole in the corner. And then punch a hole in that corner. And this is my rivet press. It is the um, Cam Snaps, K-A-M Snaps.com. That's where I got mine from. 
and it is the Pro Stand Up Table something, Tabletop Press or something like that. Um, I also pre-cut these little scraps of Peltex, so just left over from bag making. Make them tiny, I pre-punched little holes in them, and I put them on the back of rivets to reinforce it. Oh, and by the way, I um, mounted, so the stand is just this metal thing, and the wooden block is something additional that um, I did on my own, so it doesn't come with a stand or anything. So here is my slip pocket. And now we have gotten to the zipper part. So like I said, I'm using zipper by the yard and I am taking my nifty tool. I know I haven't really used it much of my past so long because it's been dead and I haven't charged it, but I charged it now. So this is a electronic um, candle lighter or cigarette lighter, whatever you want to call it. It is rechargeable. Um, it's USB rechargeable. And let's see. Can you see that? So I use it to seal the ends of my zipper tape because the zipper tape is nylon. So it melts, so it won't fray. So I'm just doing that real quick. And then just measure it again. And I always, always, always overcut my zippers as well, because I can go back and trim them later. <clears throat> so before I forget, let's put on the zipper pull. I have given up on zipper pull doohickeys because it always takes me longer to do that than it does to just do it by hand and feed it through myself. So, Julie, at this part right here, that's where I want to stitch back and forth so that it doesn't, um, it does not, or well, the zipper pull doesn't come off. Um, it is an electronic cigarette lighter, or candle lighter. And I got it off Amazon. So literally all I'm doing is sewing forward and back stitching across the zipper teeth. So let's trim that and this. And it's kind of hard to see because the colors blend in, but at the top right there. That's where I have my line of stitches, and it prevents my zipper pull from coming off. So with the zipper ends, we're going to 
heat up our iron again. Grab our wool mat. So we are pressing in the sides. Anybody watching anything good on TV? And by TV, I mean Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, all that. Going out ahead and doing the same with the other edges. I am now obsessed with uh, the show Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. If you're in the States, it is on Netflix and it is hilarious I don't know where it's been or why I haven't seen it before now but it is so funny I watched all four seasons and it went by so fast and now I'm sad because I don't have any more to watch um, I'm actually going to take my scissors and I'm going to just kind of cut these corners a little bit right here so that they're not so bulky when um, we put the ends together. And I'm not clipping them super, super close because I don't want any gaps to show. So I'm not getting very, very close to the edge. So after I have all four ends folded and trimmed, press that one more time. I always forget about WandaVision because I don't, um, I never go to Disney Plus, so I always forget that it's there. So when I think Disney, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about what I had when it was Disney and it was just Disney shows. Now there's Marvel and all this other stuff on there and I just don't think of it. I know Shinova loves WandaVision. Alright, so now our zipper tabs. Fold it over. Going to look like this. And then uh, just Slip in your 
zipper. I'm just trying to tuck in the the edges to make sure that it doesn't show. And if it is hard for you to keep everything together, you can use double-sided tape. make sure that these work out before I sew them on. just going to pull my zipper pull out of the way a little bit and you're going to sew a box around that zipper end Did that happen? Oh, <sighs> that feeling when you sew and then you realize that your bobbin is out of thread.
if there was just like a never ending bobbin or like why doesn't somebody come up with a way that we could just put another spool of thread as the bobbin why don't they just standardize what a spool of thread looks like and then somebody build a machine where you don't need a bobbin you just stick a spool of thread there all right so here's my zipper so the beginning and the end and the zipper pull all right so now we start putting things together get some water some of this mess. Okay. So place one lining piece on your surface right side up. Center your zipper over this. So note that in the picture it shows the zipper pull to the left, closed and to the left. So I just clip mine on like this. So my, my tabs, notice my tabs are free. Then put a wrong side exterior body piece over that and clip that in place. So if you would like, you can use double sided tape. I am feeling very uh, ballsy today, so I'm not going to use any. So this is what that sandwich is going to look like. So your sandwich has your lining right side up, your zipper right side up, and your exterior wrong side up or right side down. And so for this, you're actually going to start sewing in the middle of your bag. So you're going to sew from the middle to that one inch mark that we made in the very beginning. And you're doing that at a quarter inch seam allowance. Don't forget to back stitch. Oops. Don't listen to me. Back stitch and then stop with your needle down and don't remove it from the machine. So I did. I didn't cut my thread yet though, so let me just line that back up. And we will pretend I didn't do that. So raise your zipper foot um, or your presser foot. Grab the end of the zipper and pull it to the left and out of the seam allowance. So take your ruler and measure a three quarters, three quarter of an inch down from the top. And just make a dash there. 
so that you are consistent when you're pulling your zipper out of the way. So with your zipper foot or your presser foot up, I'm going to take my tab and just angle it down towards the bottom of the bag. And I'm going to stop when the top of my zipper tape hits that line at the three quarter mark. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, I can show you when I do the next one, I'll move the camera closer. Um, then finish sewing to the end and back stitch. And then flip the piece over. Oops. And just trim some of this out of the way. And put your presser foot down where you started in the middle. And then I'm going to take my ruler and make that three quarter inch mark again. Again, stop with my needle still down and pull that zipper out of the way. You might have to move your zipper pull a little bit and pull that so that the top of your zipper is lined up with that three quarter inch mark and keep sewing and back stitch when you get to the end. I will show you what that looks like. I will show you on the green side because it's easier to see the stitches. Does anybody else just cut thread and throw it on the floor? It's a really bad habit. You'd think I would just put a trash can there, but... Okay. So, I started at the middle. So right there you can kind of see where the there's more stitches and I sewed to the end. So here is my one inch mark right here. So I stopped sewing there. I back stitched a couple, left my needle down, and then I drew a line three quarters, you can't really see, three quarters of an inch down from this side. So from the top to three quarter inch. And then I pulled the zipper, the zipper tab, pulled it down. So I pulled it out of the way so that I'm not sewing with the zipper now. And I pulled it down and put this edge right here, so the top zipper edge. So that top edge is going to touch that three quarter inch mark. So it's going to look like this. And you hold that together and then you sew all the way to the end. So it's going to not catch the zipper that last inch or so and then you do the same with the other side and so flip everything over and take it so that your exterior and your interior are close my zipper are pulled away from the zipper and then you're going to press that down or in my case roll that or finger press whatever works for you okay so this is what you get you get your clean 
edge right here, and then your zipper pull, or your zipper tape right here. I'm glad I'm not the only one, Robin. Um... And then we are going to do the other one. So I love that Janelle says you're going to do the same thing with the other side. And she actually walks you through it still so that you're not, you know, like it doesn't just say repeat on other side. And then you kind of got to figure it out yourself. So I, um, it's really hard for me to understand written directions sometimes like I like to overthink it and so like I will be sitting here going okay so if I did this and did this and then what is it supposed to look like and it doesn't work for me so I love that Janelle actually tells you what you need to do so you're gonna put the second lining body piece up and then you're going to put your zipper face up Then you're going to put your exterior wrong side up. So now your zipper pull is going to be on the right when closed. So make sure that everything lines up though so that you are not completely misaligned. So your Exterior should be right where your lining piece is. Clip that in place. And then keeping your zipper tab lined with that. Keep clipping. Just driving me nuts. Super excited because tomorrow I get to go check out my new vinyl that just arrived after a month long cruise from overseas. It has finally landed and now I get to go cut all of it so that I can put it up for sale in the shop. So hopefully you like what I picked, because if not, I'm going to be stuck with a ton of vinyl. Not complaining, although Jeff would probably complain, because we do not have room to keep that in our house. Um, and then we're going to do the exact same thing with this side. So just make sure that you have... You're keeping everything together, especially your zipper tape, because that tends to slide out of the way. Quarter inch seam allowance, start in the middle, back stitch, and I might as well do the marking right now. Yeah, I love I love this machine and it is constantly like running out of thread. I don't understand. What was it? There is there is some machine out there that like one of the specifications or in the description or something it says that it's got like one of the biggest bobbin sizes that there are and I was like I want to buy it just for that reason. to the end and I'm going to pull my zipper tape out of the way but my zipper pull is in the way so I'm gonna try 
try to move that. I decided that the machine, whatever machine I get next, is going to be one that is strong enough to sew bags, but I still need, at the very least, a zigzag function. because I also sew garments, and while I use my serger for like 90% of the construction, um, there are things that I still need to do on a sewing machine, and I hate having to keep one machine to do this, and one machine to do that, and the other machine to do like other random small task. If I had unlimited space, that would be a different story. I wouldn't have to worry about where everything is going, but we are limited in space, so I can't just have 5,000 machines set up. Not to mention, it has to be away from Zoe, my red-eating cat. Which I'm really surprised that she is not mewing at the door right now. Generally, when she hears me talking, she is all up in my business, and if she can't come in, she will mail at the door. Okay, so now I'm doing the last part of the zipper. Nova, that is like the only one that I have seen that has that. So I'm probably looking at um, their portable machine next. And it is decently priced. Yeah, Penny, I think that's the size that um, I had read about. I was like, why don't these machines use that? And we are going to separate this and finger press the sides. We are not going to top stitch yet. So don't top stitch. Sometimes I don't read far enough in instructions and I kind of miss not to do things. But top stitching is not one of the things that I'm going to go ahead and do without being told. Okay. And then Unzip your zipper. Yes, I did, but then I couldn't remember that I thought it was a straight stitch only machine, so it was like a last month or something when I was doing more reading about it. Um, I saw that it offers zigzag stitch too. So open your zipper and we are going to sew our linings and our exteriors together. So, grabbing some clips. I'm still sad about the time that I saw a sale right on Facebook Marketplace somewhere around me, and I did not jump on it. And I've never seen one again since. Okay, 
Okay, this is really random, but does anybody have an ice cream truck that is constantly in your neighborhood? It drives me up the wall because I cannot stand it. Like, I will hear that song in my sleep. And it just, it keeps going. And sometimes when it's like really quiet in the neighborhood, like I swear I can hear the ice cream man. It is annoying and slightly creepy at the same time. So for your exterior, you're going to sew across the entire top. And we're doing... Oh, and tuck in your zipper ends so that they don't get caught up in your sewing. Ah. So you're going to start with your exterior, the bottom part, and just sew at a quarter inch seam allowance right across at that bottom. It snowed. Deb, I always forget, where do you live again? I live in Michigan, and it is hotter than Haiti. It's like almost 90 degrees all week. And <clears throat> I live in a tri-level. So um, my sewing room and my bedroom are on the very top level. So it is always hot in here. And my house faces the sun. So I am baking in when I'm sewing during the day and I only have like this little tiny fan blowing on me so it gets hot in here. So then go ahead and Sew along the sides. Well, I hope for you too. I cannot believe it's snowing. Or it did. So I've been trying to use up all of my um, smaller Guterman uh, spools so that I can replace them with the bigger ones, like from Wabak. Because I hate these spools. Like, you can get one project done, or maybe one and a half, and then you run out. So I'm doing the same thing with the bottom as I did for the um, slip pocket we did earlier. So I'm back stitching at the gap, the gap in the bottom, not the gap the store. And then skipping where that turning gap is, starting a couple of stitches, back stitching again sewing all the way to the end and back stitching. <sighs> Jeff insisted that we get ice cream from the ice cream truck like last summer and it's like four dollars for some overpriced 
cartoon popsicle. And I was like, God, just take me to the local custard place. I'd be so much happier. Just get me a cone. Heck, I would be happier if you took me to McDonald's and got me an ice cream cone from there. Provided the ice cream machine actually works. Or isn't being cleaned. Press your seams open if you can. You know I can't. So I'm just going to roll some of those. Especially that bottom one in the liner, because we're going to be turning and having to stitch that close later. An ice cream Jeep. Never heard of that. Okay, so now we're going to box the corners. sure that your seams are open. It's hard. stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. And then again at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So you're going to have two rows of stitching there. So it's going to look like that with the two rows. And you are going to do the same thing on all four corners. So two lining and two exterior.
yes, Kim, um, I will upload it to my YouTube channel when it is over. And then it'll also be available to replay here on Facebook as well. So if you just go to either your past events and find it, the video will be on the event page. Or you can go to my business page and it should be available under past events there too. But I will make sure I post a link to my YouTube so that everybody can find it. Alright, so I boxed two of the lining corners. And now we box the exterior corners. at my thread spool and getting really nervous. Getting down to the wire. And the last corner to box. So what projects is everybody working on? This is kind of the nice thing about um, doing sew-alongs and events on my own page instead of in a group, even though the group is definitely more accessible for everybody, um, is that we are not limited to talking about just one company. We can talk about whatever you want or whatever I want. I'm sitting here going, I'm like, man, I wonder what time I'm going to finish here, and is the ice cream place still going to be open? Actually, I have, a, I have a pint of custard from my local place downstairs that I can just grab. And, ready, we are going to birth this baby. Bed. I should look that one up. Penny, I need to make my H2O sling bag too. I, I think I had it set up in my Cricut and just haven't cut it. Because the first time I tried to make it, I cut it by hand. And that, man, that bottom round base just, it was not pretty, so I gave up. I hate birthing bags.
hands need a break. I gotta look up that hack. Is it in their Facebook group, Penny? I am so glad I am not the only person that has like a billion projects at once. Oops. Heard that happen. End of the tunnel. Although the plus about having to birth a wax canvas bag is that it gives it the warning look for you. I have to make a one of those bags eventually because that's one of the patterns that um, I'll be carrying kits for. So this lining back out a little bit so that we can stitch the opening closed. Yeah, I'm definitely trying <clears throat> staples next time. So, I think right now I have um, two lavender and twine bags. Cut. Uh, I am working on the moon wake right now, and I will show you what I have so far. I am pretty in love with it, and I think I am going to keep it. So now we're getting to the point where it's time to top stitch, and I do not have enough thread in here to do that. So, let's change thread. Let's use this gold bonded nylon.
Yes, I have a moon wake. I'm working on the moon wake. I have the Rue de Neha cut out. Um, I have an Alaula. I don't know how to pronounce it, so sorry if I butchered it. Um, I have that in progress, but it's been in progress for like two months because I haven't gone back to fix it. See, this is how much thread I had left on my spool. Just cutting it pretty close. A bunch of other patterns that I have printed out, like the Isolina from Oral Rosa, um, the Mountain Saddle Bag from Emmeline, the what else? The double flip bag from Emmeline. Of course the Charlotte because that's what we're doing next weekend over in Swoon. I need to finish top stitching my Momexa that I had done, but I was trying to top stitch it and my machine was not having it and I had to take it in for service. And then I just never went back to it and finished. The Momexa. The Momexa is the one that I had issues with, but 
Um, I think it was a combination of um, not keeping the foam out of the seam allowance well enough and for this thread by the way I'm using my um, cigarette lighter candle lighter thing because this top stitching thread is bonded nylon and like we said earlier nylon melts so it seals the threads I don't do that with polyester thread because it melts. Ooh. Look. I don't know if you can see the... There we go. The gold mustardy top stitching. Digging it. And then we are going to make another row of top stitching half an inch away from the current row and because I know myself I am going to make some marks By the way, thanks to our uh, ruler discussion that we had in Swoon a while ago, I had actually picked up a couple of um, fun things to carry in the shop. I found some handles that are a little more substantial feeling than the red ones that um, I showed you, but not as big as that giant white one. Um, I also found some zipper or some uh, adhesive ruler tape to stick on your table. I am going to stick it on my table for sure because it's going to make it easier for me to cut orders. But I also got the adhesive tape from Seems So Awesome. I actually got that in the mail today or yesterday, something like that. So I will show you before we sign off today. Now we just do that second row of stitching half an inch away.
my second thought is I am pretty sure I am now in love with waxed canvas because like it was stiff when I first cut it before I started sewing anything and now it is like soft and pliable and it's got a really nice texture. So now I have my double roll of stitching in there, and now the fun part. So find your seam ripper, like you would think I have a seam ripper everywhere. one on the floor and this was also a step that the Pro Tough made really difficult for me last time because it is so thin. Um, it tore when I was trying to open the stitches to put in the wire frame. of truth. I'm like, where did I even? Come on. to go. I can find that other. How am I supposed to get this in there when I can't even, unless, am I supposed to feed the entire thing through? Let's see if I can even do that. to feed that one all the way to the other side.
because apparently I can only get this to go in one way. Also, waxed canvas is so much easier to put this through than it was to put in the canvas or the vinyl. So we are officially done. So I ended up deciding not to um, add handles to this one. Um, I will add handles to the next one that I make that's the larger size, but I think this one is a good like traveling size. Um, and I'm actually going to gift it to one of my friends who uh, recently had their baby. And that's this side, and then you open. And you can kind of see, but there is our mesh pocket with the elastic top. And then a slip pocket on the other side. And then zipped together. So the retreat bag part is done. I really love this pattern. I didn't think that I would, honestly. Um, but it is such an easy make and it is a really useful bag. So it's not going to be like 20 things that you make and is sitting around and you're like, what am I going to do with a bunch of these? They make great gifts. You can use them to hold sewing stuff. You can use them to um, use as a toiletry bag. You can, I don't know, whatever you want to put in there. There's lots and lots of options. Let me show you the couple of things that I mentioned. Oops. Glue down! Um, surely I would just sew it to the outside. Okay, so this is my Momexa that is currently in progress. So it is waxed, or it is cotton canvas on the outside with eau de coat on it to kind of keep it safe because I, I wanted to make sure that the white part of the pattern wasn't going to get all messed up. And instead of the circular um, O-rings that the pattern calls for, I used my um, X-Connect from my shop. It has a gunmetal paw print zipper pull. And the inside, it is lined with quilting cotton. 
from Blended Threads, so it is a gray linen print. And so the top part I had issue because of the foam. So like that's that's the seam compressed. So that's still like pretty thick. So now that my machine is fixed, I'm not sure if it's going to actually work or not. So I'm gonna I'll give it another try after I switch to black thread. Um, and then this is what I spent uh, a lot of the week working on on and off. So this is my moon wake in progress. So I'm using one of my vinyls. I think I have a few yards of this one for sale. So this is a, it's like a really pretty warm coppery vinyl. It sews so beautifully. It just glides through the machine. Um, and yeah, so this one I still have to put on the um, strap caps on the ends and I am working on the lining, but I mean, that's what the inside looks like right now. Um, let's see, was there anything else? So I think on maybe tomorrow, maybe Sunday, it depends on how much I get done, but I might possibly pre-record or um, do a live sneak peek of the new vinyls that I got in. So like I said, I am going to check them out tomorrow. Um, and we'll see how long I last cutting it because I, I actually had it delivered somewhere else and I'm cutting it somewhere else and I don't think that place is air conditioned in that room and it's 90 degrees so it's gonna be pretty hot um, so we will see so I can do that um, with the hardware that I got in on Monday that I um, showed you pictures of already on this on our, uh, my Facebook page and then I think we are going to do just a little brief overview of my sneaker project um, so I will go over things that you need um, if you want to follow along when I deconstruct my other shoe it's been so long since I did that shoe that I don't even know where the shoe is but I will find it eventually and um, I think that's it. It is very time consuming, but it is not hard. Double the site will not be open um, yet until I can process through the vinyl, take pictures of it, and um, get them listed. So I am aiming to have it open by Wednesday at the latest. And then I should have um, the pre-made boxes up for sale as well. No problem, Mary. So everybody have a good night. Thank you for joining me tonight. And I hope you learned something, or at least I hope I kept you company. And I will see y'all later. Bye.